I've got to break it to you. Fossil fuel companies aren't being honest with us. They've known about climate change for decades, but driven solely by profits, they chose not to sound the alarm. Instead, they've scrambled to bury the science and spin a cunning narrative to push the spotlight away from them and onto us. It's a brazen cover-up, but a cover-up so many of us still buy into. It's high time we send the spotlight back their way. The world is a pretty overwhelming place right now. It's a global pandemic. Increased social inequality. Political polarization. And that ever-present thorn in our side, climate change. Climate change. Climate change. By extreme climate change. weather. Levels are rising. Biodiversity is reportedly declining. We have left the world in a climate emergency. In this series, we'll explore how we got here, where we're headed, and what we can do to make a difference. This is The Breakdown. Let's roll the clock back to 1977 and New York City. High up in a swanky boardroom at Exxon HQ, fossil fuel bigwigs are enjoying another lucrative day on top. Some parts of the world are riding a wave of exhilarating economic progress, largely thanks to their product. And as a result, business is booming. But just as a few more zeros get added onto the weekly profit report, a leading scientist comes along and says something nobody wants to hear. In a closed door meeting with Exxon executives, scientist James Black delivers a presentation called The Greenhouse Effect, in which he warns that carbon dioxide from the world's use of fossil fuels is warming the planet and will eventually endanger humanity. He went on to say that humans have just five to 10 years until radical changes to the way that we use fossil fuels might become critical. Not what they wanted to hear. Surprisingly, Exxon didn't march James to the nearest exit and feed his report to the shredder. Instead, they actually took it all very seriously. Over the subsequent years, they invested millions upon millions of dollars into cutting edge climate science, hiring the world's top scientists and engineers to get to the bottom of this very inconvenient truth. Yeah, a lot of the early climate research um, was done by fossil fuel companies, um, you know, in part to understand the effect that their work and their business was having on the world, but also in part to understand where the um, new drilling opportunities would be. By 1982, the research had piled up and it wasn't looking good. Hurricanes with their devastating winds and flood causing rains, a perennial threat. Fossil fuels impact on the climate was unquestionable. In a leaked internal document addressed to Exxon personnel only, environmental affairs manager M.B. Glazier wrote that mitigation of the greenhouse effect would require major reductions in fossil fuel combustion and suggested that if this wasn't done, there could be potentially catastrophic events, such as the melting of the Antarctic ice sheet, which could cause a rise in sea level on the order of five meters. As more and more scientists delivered damning internal reports, the board members started to work up a sweat. The men in charge really didn't like what they were hearing. It was all too big, too bothersome, and too threatening to their livelihoods. So in 1983, they decided to stop listening to the scientists and start listening to their accountants. Overnight, the troublesome little hitch called climate change ceased to exist. Exxon cut funding for climate research from $900,000 a year to $150,000, out of a total research budget of $600 million. And that was um, the sort of first golden age of climate research. Um, but they, they shut it all down in the late 70s and um, took a, a very different approach to uh, public messaging, especially, in which they spent a lot of money and put a lot of effort into at least obfuscating and often outright denying um, the climate science, which they knew was real from their own work. A new culture of denial was born, lifted straight from the tobacco industry's handbook. Cigarettes won't give you lung cancer, keep buying them, became climate change isn't real, now fill up your tank and let's drill through the Arctic. But despite Big Oil's best efforts, the issue was entering the public consciousness. And that happens around 88, 89, when the IPCC is created, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and climate scientist James Hansen testifies in the US Congress based on scientific work that he's done at NASA, that climate change is in fact underway. 
this evidence represents a very strong case, in my opinion, that the greenhouse effect has been detected and it is changing our climate now. When that happens, we begin to see organized disinformation campaigns funded heavily by the fossil fuel industry. And it takes a number of forms. It takes the forms of advertising campaigns in major newspapers, such as the New York Times. It takes the form of creating what are called third-party allies, groups that appear to be independent, but aren't really. So ExxonMobil was part of something called the Global Climate Coalition. An innocuous name for a nefarious organization. The GCC had one simple aim, to obscure the scientific understanding of fossil fuels' impact on the climate. In a leaked internal document, they announced victory will be achieved when average citizens understand uncertainties in climate science, and when recognition of uncertainty becomes part of the conventional wisdom. In other words, sowing confusion and spreading misinformation was the industry's new strategy. And then, at the turn of the millennium, British Petroleum took it one step further by rebranding to Beyond Petroleum and hiring a marketing agency to popularize an ingenious idea that would swing the spotlight away from them and onto us. The carbon footprint was born. So the carbon footprint is essentially how much carbon you are personally producing over a year. So they have really found ways to push the responsibility for carbon output onto the consumers. It's basically like stop hitting yourself if you've ever had like an older sibling or older cousin who's like, holding your fist and punching you with it and telling you to stop hitting yourself, that's what the fossil fuel industry does to its consumers. In the age of the consumer, the individual became the perfect scapegoat. It was up to us to keep the ice caps cold, and if they continued to melt, well, it was because we didn't use a bamboo toothbrush. Meanwhile, with all of our eyes trained on each other, the big oil executives tiptoed behind the curtain and got on with business. And the amazing thing is, it still prevails today. Any individual who speaks out about climate change is routinely dragged down, ridiculed, and branded a hypocrite. The way we live today means that complicity is almost unavoidable. But it's not your fault. The fault of man-made climate change can't lie with any individual. It is the symptom of a broken system that has consistently valued profit over people. I would much rather like take all of my resentment and rage out on the fossil fuel industry. All the people who put us in this trick bag, those are the people I want to yell at. Today, just 20 firms are responsible for more than one third of all greenhouse gas emissions. Their relentless exploitation of the world's oil, gas and coal reserves have caused irrevocable harm to the environment and to communities around the world. And their shameless attempts to deny the science and confuse the public have robbed us of decades of precious time that we will never get back. Many scientists agree there's ample time to better understand climate system systems and consider policy options. So there's simply no reason to take drastic action now. So they knew, but now the cat's out the bag. We know that man-made climate change is real and we know who the biggest perpetrators are. So what if, instead of pointing fingers at each other every time one of us uses a plastic straw, we came together to see that the real culprits step up and take action, and to influence real change in the system that got us here in the first place? To learn more about how to take action on the climate crisis, check out our Instagram account, Earthrise Studio. In other episodes of The Breakdown, we explore topics like climate justice and climate solutions. There's loads you can do about climate change. Here are a few actions that are relevant to this episode. The series was made possible by Waterbear Network, a new and interactive platform that allows you to watch content about the future of our planet and directly take action. It's totally free to create an account, so why not check it out?